This is a lesson from our Blender animation course. If you want to know more about how to animate with Blender, get the full course at bloopanimation.com slash Blender animation. The shot we're going to be animating is this alien uh, jumping from the right side to the left side. But before we go into animation, there's a really cool tool I want you to know. It's called the grease pencil. This tool lets you draw on the screen and plan your action ahead of time. That could be very useful to, to start playing around with drawings before even actually posing the character. Traditionally, that would be done with pen and paper, just drawing thumbnails of your action. But with the grease pencil tool, you can do it straight on the screen and it's very cool. So as you can see, I've divided the window into the camera view and the perspective view. But for the, for the actual drawing, we can actually use just the camera view. So I'm going to maximize the area. And to access the grease pencil, we're going to click on the little plus button here. And under the grease pencil tab, we're going to have all the options. So what are our options for the grease pencil? The actual drawing options are these four. We can do a free drawing. I'm using a Wacom tablet to draw, by the way, but you can use the mouse as well. It's very recommended to use a tablet, though. You can use the erase to erase your drawing. So let me draw something again. I can use the erase and erase my drawing. You can draw a line, which you do by press and hold the left mouse button. And you can draw a polygonal object by clicking on different places on the screen and then escape when you're done. Now initially you'll have to keep clicking on one of those every time you want to draw. So if I draw something and then I, I stop my drawing, I can't immediately draw another thing. I have to click on draw again and then make another drawing. You can enable continuous drawing for continuous drawing. So now I can just keep adding stuff to my drawing. And you press escape when you're done. The stroke placement options are kind of interesting, but I have to go to perspective mode to show you that. So I'm going to disable the lock camera to view option. And that way I can snap out of it by rotating the camera. So right now you see that the drawings we've made are actually placed in the 3D space. So let's, let's try to understand what, what this means a little better. And to do that, I'm going to actually delete our, uh, our grease pencil drawing. And we're going to get to the layers uh, later on. So the, the options that we have for the placements are view, surface, and cursor. These are the main options that we're going to be using most of the time. I'm not going to bother with the stroke option for this video. So the view option, when we draw, let's uh, draw a person. Not a very good drawing, but when we do that and then we move our camera around, you can see that our drawing stays to the view, to the camera at all times. So it doesn't correspond with the 3D world. I can try to, to adjust it, but it's always going to be uh, facing the camera. I'm going to delete that. The second stroke placement is the cursor. To see that, I'm going to cancel the only render display so we can see uh, the other stuff on the screen. That little cursor that we can change its location with the right mouse button is going to be the origin of the placement of our drawing. So let's draw a nice big smiley, smiley face. And now when I move in the 3D space, you can see that it's actually centered around that cursor. Now the third option we have is surface. And to visualize it a little better, we should probably create a cube. And go back to the grease pencil, choose surface, and now I'm going to draw something like this. So it seems like it's a flat drawing, right? But when we rotate, you can see what happens. It actually draws on the 3D surface. So that could be useful for making modeling notes or stuff like that. But for animation planning, it's not really the way to go. For animation planning, the best way to go would be probably either view or cursor. I would, I would go with view since we're going to be 
doing it on the camera view and the camera view is not going to be changing. So let's delete all the drawings we've made. Delete the cube. And now let's talk about the layers. Under the options for the grease pencil tool, we have this little layer window here. And whenever we start a new drawing, you can see that a layer was automatically created. So now if I make my drawing, I can make changes to the layer and that's going to affect the drawing. So right now, this is the stroke color, but I can change it to whatever color I want. I can make it thicker or thinner, and it's also reactive to the Wacom tablet. So if you're using that, you can change the pressure amount on your drawing and make it thicker or thinner. So that, that's really useful for planning. You could do a fill, but I, I, I don't really use it for, uh, for sketching. And control the opacity. That's pretty useful because sometimes you don't want it to hide the actual model. So you want to keep it at like maybe 50% opacity. The frame unlocked or locked tab is really important. Right now when it's on unlocked, it means that if we go to a new frame and start a new drawing, it's going to get rid of the previous drawing. And that previous drawing that we did is going to stay on that frame that we were at. So you see on frame one, we have this drawing, but whenever we move to the next frame, it's going to replace it. And that's, that's the best way to pose your sketches beforehand. Otherwise, all your drawings will just accumulate one on, another, on top of each other. So if we do a locked, then when I draw another drawing, it just keeps adding it. I'm going to disable continuous drawing. It's going to keep adding it on the, on the next frame. So you see, it doesn't really co correspond to the frames anymore. It's not keyframing it. If I disable it and I start a drawing, it created a new keyframe here, which is the actually the drawing itself. So that's the best way to, to plan to sketch your actions. Let's delete this layer. This is the way to delete the drawing. You can't select the drawing and delete it. You need to do it from the layer. And create a new drawing. All right, so now let's start sketching in the camera view. So I'm going to switch back to the camera. I'm going to enable the only render option so everything is clean. And I'm going to change our color to something more prominent than black, maybe green. Oh, actually, the alien is green, so maybe we should do yellow. And I'm going to keep the opacity at like 50%. So now I'm going to start drawing my poses. So the first pose would be preparing for the jump. I'm going to enable continue drawing so that I have to keep, keep pressing draw. So it's going to be preparing. And then I'm going to go one frame ahead by pressing the right arrow key. And in this, in this pose, it's going to be preparing for the jump. And we can switch between the poses with the arrow keys. It's really a handy way to examine your animation. And I'm going to go one frame further. And this is going to be when he's actually starting the jump. And then the next pose would be in the air. It doesn't have to be good drawings, just need want to get the general shape of the body. And the next pose would be almost the contact pose. Then the one before last is going to be the squash pose. And the next one, back to standing up. All right, so we have a pretty cool animation going on here. Now, if we, if we watch it, it's pretty fast. 
so we might want to change the timing on it. Now before we start handling the timing, because the timing is obviously off here, it's way too fast, there's another cool feature I want to show you, uh, the onion skinning. So if you enable onion skinning, you can set how many frames before you want to view. And now, when you're watching it, you can set up before and after frames. It shows you an, an onion skin version of the frames beforehand and after. So I like to enable the before frames. And that way you can maybe adjust your drawings a little bit to create an arc. This is a much uh, more efficient way to, to do your drawings. That way you can draw on this frame and make sure that you're, you're doing something pretty similar to the drawing before that. So make sure you have onion skinning enabled when you're doing these drawings. All right, now I'm gonna turn it off so we can watch our animation. And now we should adjust the timing. To do that, we're gonna go to the dope sheet. And you can see that we don't have anything going on over here. And that's because we need to switch from dope sheet to the grease pencil mode. We're still in dope sheet, but this is a special dope sheet mode, the grease pencil. I'm gonna zoom in by press A. And these are our poses. So let's zoom out a little bit so we can spread them out. Now we can just move them around. That's, that's really cool. Just click uh, a keyframe and drag with the middle mouse button. So I'm gonna give it a few frames at the beginning before we do the, the prepare, the squashing to the floor. And then I'm gonna give it a few frames of that. And then once he actually jumps, I'll probably wanna to go to the next pose quickly and the next, the other pose quickly as well. So maybe like two frames apart. And then a few frames extra between the squashing and the stretching. So let's see that. All right, that's, that's already better time-wise. Let's just uh, make sure our timeline range is the range that we were actually working on. And let's watch it again. All right, that's, that's pretty good, I think. I think that's a, a good base to start working with. And you can see, already see that we actually have a shot that's, that is planned for animation. And now when we're starting to animate the character, we have a very good basis to work with. So we don't have to start from scratch. That's why uh, sketching with the grease pencil is such a handy way to plan out your shot. Rather than just guessing each pose and its timing, we can set the timing beforehand and set the poses beforehand. So yeah, that could be pretty useful.